Well, I, I just want to add to that. Uh, so my, my wife, Simi uh, Kastner, and I moved here uh, in 1996, and we immediately began to ask around uh, uh, people in the arts community and other uh, elements of, of society and, and, and heard a lot of different um, suggestions, but the one that seemed to come up over and over again was the Murphy School Auditorium. And we looked at it and immediately realized that this was a, a potentially spectacular location and that the, the history of the building was so important um, that it might be possible to, to wed our project, which is uh, Burning Coal is a very small nonprofit organization with a budget of just under $300,000 annually, but to connect that project to some of the movers and shakers in the community because of the history of the building. So it seemed like a no-brainer to us, and, um, and so we began to move forward in, in that way. The first person we spoke with uh, was uh, Greg Warren, um, and he expressed interest in it. And, um, you know, just quite honestly, uh, my understanding from Greg is that one of the uh, aspects of his lease with the city, uh, city of Raleigh, hello, come in, um, was uh, that um, the city of Raleigh required him to keep this auditorium up too, so to put a new roof on it if it went bad, or to fix the columns out front, that sort of thing. And he, of course, had no use for it. Uh, it was not part of what he was doing here. And so our offer to, to uh, DHIC was that we would do that, that we would take that financial responsibility off of DHIC's hands in exchange for relatively low uh, monthly rent on the space. And that's what we did. So we have a long-term lease. We don't own the space. We have a long-term lease with DHIC with rent that is breathtakingly low uh, and, uh, and that's a wonderful thing and we do pay utilities and property taxes and that sort of thing but but uh, it's a it's a nice uh, position for us to be in the next thing we uh, needed to do and there were a series of um, fortuitous accidents uh, associated with this project as i guess there inevitably will be but uh, was to um, to connect ourselves with this uh, gentleman to my left here greg paul who is, um, besides uh, one of the most respected uh, building contractors in Raleigh, uh, also not a bad actor as well. <laughs> <laughs> he came to our company first as an actor, and, and from there uh, we began to, to move forward with the idea of developing the, the space. Greg, do you want to talk a little bit at this point about what, uh, what happened next? Well, um, it was fairly early in the, the development of your idea to, to use this space that, that um, I got involved. I was actually at the meeting that, that uh, Peter referred to earlier uh, where we, we uh, approached the Oakwood community and wanted them to sort of get behind. So I'd say it was probably uh, 2001 or thereabouts that, that, so, um, that I started to, to uh, sort of be involved uh, with the thought that I'd like to help get this project done, and, and uh, just assumed that that I would somehow be able to to, to do the the actual construction work. Um, so it, that meant that a that a long series of, of things had to happen. Mainly raise money, and uh, then uh, have design work done and approved by the, by the city. Um, so uh, I think it was about. About that time, shortly after we approached the, uh, the Oakwood uh, community, that we we first uh, approached the city council. Uh, Charles Meeker had recently um, become mayor, and uh, and uh, Jerry and Sammy and I went to, to visit him to, to see uh, whether there'd be any any chance of having the city um, get behind the project, and. Uh, he was very interested, and Charles has always been a, a, a very strong supporter and understander of, of the importance of the arts in, in the, the uh, furthering of cultural life in the city. And, and particularly the downtown, in the downtown, especially downtown, right? Mm -hmm. Our proximity to the real uh, geographic center of town and, and urban neighborhoods is just a, a great advantage for what this place is, but anyway, uh, uh, Charles was behind it. He uh, he sort of coached us as to how to approach.
approach individual city council uh, members and, and get them interested. Um, at the time, there was, there was still a, a fairly conservative city council um, uh, sort of left over from, from what I'd like to refer to as the dark ages <laughs> <laughs> of the late 90s when, when things just did not, did, did not get um, the kind of attention that they needed to in, in, the, in the city center. And, uh, uh, but we, we did approach all of each uh, city council member and, and, and did get uh, surprising support, although uh, it was unanimous in, in the city council when they first um, decided to give us a $200,000 matching grant uh, toward, the, toward the fund. Greg and I actually went uh, uh, together to each of the native people on the, the council, I believe, and met with them individually in their offices or their homes. And, and then, uh, of course, a lot of time passed, and, and the, 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 the uh, individual and corporate fundraising efforts were excruciatingly um, tough. And so, so as time. As more time passed, the, the, the target got higher and the, and the, the uh, resources didn't quite keep up. So we, we went back to the city again in, uh, I think it was 04, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe 05. And, uh, and Charles said, uh, do not despair. Remember he said, he said well, before again, this, is, this is something that's really worth, worth doing. And, and they doubled the um, the city's pledge, which um, we had to do the whole thing again. It was a new city council, and, and uh, 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 we actually had a few, uh, a few uh, uh, votes against it on that council. Uh, uh, maybe they were getting a little less uh, uh, convinced that we could ever pull it off. But, but, uh, uh, that did get us to a point where, where uh, where we, we said we have we have 40 percent of, of our goal, and we had at that time raised an, uh, another 300 thousand dollars. So we were we were to the point where we decided we would break ground in uh, in the fall of 2006, and and do the demolition work and commission the uh, the architectural work done. Uh, so we sort of uh, closed our eyes and plunged <laughs> plunged ahead and had a, had a groundbreaking ceremony. This, this is going to happen. Um, shortly before that, um, um, my wife Mary and I had approached Lewis Cherry uh, to see if, if he would be interested in, in um, doing, doing the architectural work. Um, Mary and Lewis were in, in uh, graduate school together, so they known each other for a long time. And we, we are uh, longtime fans of Lewis's work. Recently named a fellow in the Institute of Architects, and, and uh, well regarded for good reason. So um, uh, I don't know if it was a good choice for him or not, but um, <laughs> maybe he didn't talk him into it. And, uh, and so by the time we did the groundbreaking, we had a we had a concept here, which included um, lowering the the floor level to where it is now, which allowed room for a, for a balcony. In a higher space and room for all the utilities to get in. It's a brilliant concept on, um, on Lewis's part. And I want to back up and say that before Lewis came on board, we had another architect uh, working with us, and, and we had not solved that problem. Uh, the original doors to the space are, I believe, 40 inches off of ground level or grade level. And so for the longest, for a year or more, we, we all looked at the space and wondered how we could possibly fit the handicapped access ramps in the space if we dropped the floor down 40 inches. And Lewis took about three seconds to look at the <laughs> <laughs> Don't 